Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So today we've got to make a, or modify, a saw collar for a sawmill. Now, many of you know that I really enjoy sawing. Um, I have a mill that I built entirely here in the shop um, based off of several designs. I've owned several mills over the years, um, bits and pieces, and I just took everything about the ones I liked and incorporated them into my own. Um, and so I'm very familiar with, with saw arbors and collars. Um, have made several of them over the years for other customers. But this collar, this is the outer collar, is flat. The problem with that is you need to be biting on the very edge of your collar. So they're always tapered. They always are tapered. Their inner collar that's sweated to the to the saw arbor has the taper. This one does not, and they're having numerous problems with that. So, in order to hold this, because it's got that big taper on the back for clearance for the carriage, we're going to make a mandrel. And uh, we could use expanding mandrels. I have them, but they're expensive, and I'm sure most of you guys aren't going to have them. But what we'll do is we'll take a piece of stock that's larger than our bore. We will make a washer out of the end, probably probably about a quarter to three eighths of an inch thick, just a good size a washer. And then we'll chuck up the rest of the stock again. We'll drill and tap it, and we'll turn the OD to fit the collar on it. And we'll leave a little bit of clearance so we won't turn the turn the length of the OD. Um, we'll turn it shorter than the length of the bore so that we actually will, when we tighten down our washer, we'll have some clamping force. And we'll leave it all in the chuck the whole time and uh, to keep it true to our, to our lathe. And then we'll put our collar on and turn our taper with the, with the compound. So that's how we'll do that. Let's, uh, and before we get started, I just want to point out, you can see it right here, that's the Cincinnati vertical milling attachment that I did a video on recently that just came in. So there it is. It's on the machine. Um, hopefully soon here I can get some time and do a video. Um, it won't be today, but um, later today we're actually going out and sawing, so if the weather clears up. But let's get started on this job.
But if you saw, I had a little little trouble fitting that up at first there. Um, there was a little burr from where the nut goes on, and it kind of wore a burr on there. But it fits on there really good. Um, you know, these things aren't that precision. <laughs> no matter no matter how much you want to think they are, um, they're not. I mean, they were making them a. 150 years ago this way so you know they didn't have the tooling we have now and this is a very very close fit this will work perfectly um, now we take our our washer we made and I just faced the one side and the saw cut on the other so what we'll do is we'll take run the bolt through through the saw cut side we'll leave that out and I'm, my bolt might be a little long. We'll find out real soon here. I can just grab a different one. Well, that'll work. And we tighten our tighten our bolt. Now it's on there. That's a mandrel. It's set up as a mandrel. It'll work for us. Looks really good. So now we got to set up our compound for our, our angle in. We're gonna cut in deeper at the inside and these again are not super precision but it's gotta have an angle. So we're gonna set this thing up. We're gonna zero it on our compound here. We'll go to the zero mark and then we'll bump it back just a tiny bit. Said. It doesn't take much. And I need a bigger, bigger wrench too. But also my little drive adapter for my compound. So let me grab a bigger wrench. And turn that, turn that tool post. And of course, it's not going to clear. That's okay. Say in a big distance, we can turn it with the little wheel. So what we'll do first is we'll just touch off. Actually, in a ways, we'll touch off right close to the center. And then we'll zero our indicator right here so we know where we are. All right, so we're touched off. Now we're just gonna turn it back and make sure it doesn't touch. And that's way more angle than we want. So, because as I cranked it back, we're almost, I'd say we're close to an eighth inch away. So now we just gotta Find our happy place. And that's still a pretty good angle. I think what's going on here is I wasn't on my mark, the right mark, because I didn't grab my flashlight so I could see it good. So let's just do trial and error. Oh, 
That's getting a lot closer. Is it, you're not putting a lot of taper on there, but you don't want too much either. And the really cool thing about these old circular mills, a lot of the times they machine the collar right on the mill. They, uh, there's companies that come out and they, they will, wow. Um, they set up a little lathe cross slide right at the, right on the arbor and uh, machine it right on the saw, on the husk. And what they'll do there is they'll turn the collar, the outer collar around. They'll do the inner collar and then they'll turn the, the outer collar so it's facing out and they'll face that one too. Let's see where we're at here. Oh, that's close. That's about five thousandths. Let's take it just a touch more. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking that was going to be the case. This collar actually has been crushed a little bit. And you'll see that on these mills. I mean, I could feel the burr right there as I when I started this. So we just got to clean all that up. There it is. That is all cleaned up. Oh, maybe not. I see a little spot right there. We'll just take another, another thou. And well, that's it. It's all cleaned up. So that's how it's done. That's how you make a mandrel. Of what you can make whatever you need, however you need it. Um, but that's how you hold your part. If you got an odd thing that you're only going to do once or twice or whatever, I mean, you can you can use these multiple times too. I also have one that I made years ago for a, a repeat job. And well, it's, I haven't done it in a while, but kind of dusty. But this one goes in the big lathe, indicated in in the four jaw. And then I got a five bolt pattern there. You just unbolt it. And it's a big pulley that I turn the OD on. 
Um, we actually weld up the OD of the pulley, or the shiv, it's a, it's a cable shiv. We weld up where the cable is wore in, and then uh, remachine it. So that holds that, um, works well, works extremely well. Like I said, that's a 20 or 24 or 28 inch diameter shiv, so you got a lot of torque there when it's turning in the lathe. So that's, you can make these for anything. And if you put them in a forge eye, you can re-indicate them however you need. So, um, so we're going to probably end the video here. Um, please don't forget about the Cincinnati vertical attachment. We'll do a video on that one soon enough. I'm waiting for my help to get here and hopefully the weather to clear up. And we're going to saw some this afternoon on my mill. Um, and we're going to try to do a video on that, which will be a lot of fun. Um, so that'll be coming up too. And, uh, don't forget to check out our website, www.toppermachine.com. And please like, subscribe, and share. Share our video, share our channel. Help us grow the channel. We'll keep doing this as long as we keep growing and people want to keep seeing it. We'll keep doing it. Um, I'm, actually, I'm having fun doing this, so we're going to keep on going. And, and hopefully I can teach you guys something. And hopefully we get to some mistakes so I can show you what not to do, too. Um, but we're working on that. I'm, I'm not perfect. I try to be, but surprisingly, I haven't screwed anything up lately. So we'll see. Um, so till next time, get out in your shop, get it done right the first time.